the F35EX, F35FX, and F35GX, three radical new evolutions of America's most iconic fighter jet, the F35 Lightning II. These aren't just upgrades, they're a bold roadmap to deliver 80% of the next generation fighter's power at half the cost. Imagine the F-35 stretched longer, stealthier than ever, with fuel tanks that let it stay in the fight longer and tech that edges into sixth-generation territory. At a time when the U.S. is scrambling to keep pace with China's J-20 and Russia's Su-57, these three concepts could be the key to maintaining air dominance without waiting years for a new jet to arrive. The United States faces a brutal question. How do you keep air dominance when your next generation fighter program is slipping behind schedule, budgets are under the knife, and your rivals are closing in fast? The answer might not be a new jet at all, but three radical evolutions of the fighter America already knows best. The F-35 Lightning II. Meet the F-35 EX, F-35 FX, and F-35 GX. Three designs. Lockheed Martin recently lost the Next Generation Air Dominance contract, the Air Force's golden ticket to a future air superiority fighter, to Boeing. That's a big hit, but it's also an opportunity. Instead of letting the future fly away, Lockheed is asking, what if we could push the F-35 far beyond its original limits? What if we could skip the slow, expensive, build-from-scratch process and upgrade what we already have into something almost as good as NGAD without NGAD's multi-billion dollar price tag? That's where David Cummings comes in. If you're a stealth aviation nerd, you know the name. Cummings was the chief configurator for the YF-23, the rival stealth fighter that lost to the F-22 Raptor in the early 90s. He spent decades designing cutting-edge aircraft, and now he's back with an idea that could give the F-35 a whole new lease on life. In an interview with Aviation Week, David Cummings laid out two key strategies to make the F-35 5.5 generation. Increase internal fuel volume, because range is survival in a Pacific or Arctic feeder, and eliminate the tail to cut radar signature and boost maneuverability. Using Lockheed's own existing design concepts as a base, he sketched out three pathways, short-term, medium-term, and long-term, each one more radical than the last. First on the runway, the F-35EX. Think of it as an instant performance boost using mostly off-the-shelf parts. The recipe is simple. Stretch the fuselage by 60 inches, five extra feet of room for fuel and mission gear. Add a canward up front, those small four wings give extra lift and tighter pitch control. Install tanks for an additional 4,000 pounds of internal fuel, plus an optional external tank for 1,500 more. That means the EX could fly farther, stay on station longer, and engage targets that the current F-35A might not even reach without refueling. In an age where tanker aircraft could be prime targets, that extra range is pure gold. Cummings sees the EX as a gap filler, something that could be produced quickly to give both the Air Force and Navy a near-term edge, especially since the FAXX program has taken budget cuts and may not arrive on time. It's fast, it's cost-effective, and it doesn't require a decade of R&D to get airborne. Then comes the F-35FX, where things start getting bold. This isn't just an F-35 with new fuel tanks. This is a leap toward 6th gen design philosophy. The FX uses the same stretched fuselage as the EX, but loses the tail entirely. No vertical stabilizers, no horizontal stabilizers, nothing sticking up to catch radar waves. The result is a sleeker profile and a dramatically smaller radar cross-section. The design draws from Lockheed's X-44 Manta, multi-axis no-tail aircraft, an experimental concept that used thrust vectoring and advanced control surfaces instead of traditional tails. Combine that with delta-shaped wings and the FX would enjoy better high-speed aerodynamics, higher altitudes, and 50% more internal fuel than today's F-35A. That's massive for long-range patrols over the Pacific or sustained combat in Eastern Europe. 
The FX is a midterm solution, more radical than the EX, but still grounded in the existing F35 architecture. It would require new manufacturing processes, but it wouldn't mean starting entirely from scratch. Finally, the F35 GX, Cummings' masterpiece. If the FX is evolution, the GX is transformation. This design pushes stealth and performance to their absolute limits. Here's what changes. The forward fuselage gets a 70-degree chine, an angled surface that deflects radar energy away from enemy receivers. Engine inlets are moved under the chine, cleaning up the top profile so it reflects almost nothing upward. Wing tips are clipped to match the chine angle, creating a consistent stealth geometry. Every rear-facing edge is perfectly aligned to reduce radar visibility from any angle. This is a pure stealth fighter, a machine built for first strike capability and survival deep inside contested airspace. It's the long-term vision, the one that could keep the F-35 relevant into the 2040s. So why should we care about three concept sketches? Because time is the one resource the US military doesn't have. China is producing its J-20 Mighty Dragon at a pace that makes Western analysts nervous. Russia's Su-57 Felon, while struggling in production, is still improving, and both nations are racing to field their own sixth-generation fighters. The U.S. can't simply wait for NGAD and FAXX to roll off the assembly line. Those programs are expensive, slow, and politically vulnerable to budget cuts. An F-35.5 Gen could be the bridge, giving the U.S. many of the capabilities it needs now without gambling on when the true 6th gen birds will arrive. And remember, the F-35 already has a global supply chain and multiple allied operators. That means any EX, FX, or GX could be exported to partners like Japan, Australia, or the UK, multiplying its impact far beyond US squadrons. The F-35 EX, FX, and GX aren't just about new shapes and bigger fuel tanks. They're about strategy, they're about using what you have, pushing it harder, and adapting faster than your rivals can respond. In the coming decade, air combat won't just be about who has the newest fighter, it'll be about who can get a capable fighter into the air first and keep it there. Lockheed hasn't committed to these designs yet, but the fact that they're even being discussed means one thing. The race for the future of air dominance is still wide open, and the F-35? It might not be ready to retire its crown just yet.